Hello, Mo, and welcome. Very well, welcome, Mo. <laughs> it's Thank great you. to speak to you again, right? After your time at Microsoft more than 15 years ago. Um, and in full disclosure to our listeners, you know, the reason why we reconnect again today, and actually really after a couple of months ago again, is because of um, actually my daughter. My daughter, Ro, uh, two mm -hmm. years back, <laughs> Uh, attended one of your conferences and at the end of the speech of your speech I know she she came to you she spoke with you and she called me right after that she said dad and she was very moved and she said dad <laughs> I met with someone I think you may know and he's talking about something that clearly deeply resonated with me and I'm sure with you and she said it's Mo and it's about Isanali and it's about soul for happy and of mm -hmm. course I read your book, Mo, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I got to learn a lot about um, clearly your own path to uh, happiness. And uh, it's a pleasure for me, really, to have you on this uh, podcast and, 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 and ask you uh, clearly a few questions about uh, that path and your own search for, for happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly, I mean, happiness uh, seems simple, but it's very hard. And I, I, I try myself to read a lot of books to, to get more <laughs> intelligence on happiness and positivity overall. And there's a book from uh, this psychologist, Federica, uh, Barbara, sorry, Frederickson. She's a PhD. She's been writing a few books. Maybe you've, you've, you've read some mm -hmm. of them, uh, uh, Mo. And, and basically, in a way, she avoids the term uh, happy because she thinks of use and, bec and because, you know, it, she thinks that basically happiness is more the outcome of many positive moments. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you the first question, which is what is your own definition of happiness? Mm. Uh, not as opposed, but as some other words that we may use, like joy, like gratitude, like love, like you know, serenity, many other dimensions. Yeah, we, we feel. yeah, L like fun, like uh, like, like pleasure, fun. like party, which which are all replacements of of happiness. I, my, my, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I remember vividly the time when I spoke to Aurora, and you know, wonderful, intelligent young woman, and she she came to me and said, "You have to talk to 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 Dad again." And I was like, "Yeah, we haven't spoken in a few years." At, it was at then, and such a pleasure that we reconnected, and we've been. Uh, in touch, uh, you know, many times in the last couple of years. I, I love that. Uh, so thanks to her. Um, I, I will say happiness is a, the definition of happiness actually was the biggest, biggest struggle I was facing when I was searching for my own happiness. In my, in my mind, I'm an engineer, right? So yeah. to me, if you don't give me a definition of the product we're looking for, how can I even find it? How can I build it? Happiness could be right there on under my left foot and I can't see it because I don't know what it is. And so at the time I did what, I, you know, uh, you know, sounded crazy at the time, but worked, which was I started to make a definition for happiness like an engineer would. I basically mm. put on, if you want, my white lab coat and I said, yeah. OK, what what does an engineer do when there is something when you give me a machine and I don't know how it, how I don't know how it works. But I try to understand the machine. What do I do? I reverse engineer it. I take as many readings as I want of how that machine works, right? And I basically try to find a trend line, uh, uh, some kind of a, a, a smooth curve, an equation, if you want, that describes uh, what, you know, the performance of that machine. And so I did that with happiness. I simply told myself, look, I wasn't always unhappy. At the time, I was in my late 20s, early 30s. I was extremely, almost clinically depressed. Uh, and, and I said I wasn't always like that, you know, in my younger to, yeah. you know 20s i was a very happy young man and 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 i you know i started to take note of every moment in my life where i felt happy okay i quickly ran the exercise came up i remember vividly with 92 points at the time and started to find a common uh common you know ground to all of them something that's common among them and it might come as you know um, as as silly but actually there is one thing that defines every moment in your life where you ever felt happy. And and that thing is that it wasn't about the event itself. Huh? Sometimes rain makes you happy if you want to water your plants. And sometimes it makes you unhappy if you want to sit in the sun. Rain itself as an event doesn't make you happy or unhappy. It's it's a comparison. 
okay? If in every moment in your life, it's a comparison between what you, uh, what you want life to be and what life actually gives you. And, and if, you, if you run that comparison and life falls short, you feel unhappy. If you run that comparison and life uh, actually meets your expectations, you feel happy. So in that definition, what is happiness? Happiness is that moment when you're contented, when you're peaceful, when you're okay with life as it is, when you're not rejecting life, but accepting it as it is. But so what, what is really hard I find myself more? Anyway, uh, I find it hard both as a person, right? As a dad, as a, uh, but also as well as a leader, as a manager, right? Of course. Is, mm -hmm. is the way I manage my own expectations. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because in many ways, expectation setting is a big deal for yourself and for every other person. We'll talk oh, later yeah. about uh, management, but just how do you think about that expectations yeah. management? So, so, so it's interesting because we're, we're very complex beings. Huh? We have multiple targets in life. One of them is to be successful, is to persevere, is to find our purpose, is to make a difference to life, right? And you can't do that unless you sit set big, big expectations, right? You set big goals, big targets. Huh? Without those, you're not going to stretch yourself to the best that you can be. But also, we're human. We, we want to be happy. We want to be contented. We want to be loved. We want to be loving. We want to we wanna have all of those experiences, which in all honesty, contradict the first target, yeah. right? And, and, and so I came to a very simple differentiation that made it super clear for me. I, I differentiate between ambitions, targets, mm. if you want, yeah. and expectations, mm. okay? Expectations to me need to be realistic. Am ambitions need to be as high as the sky, okay? And, and, and by, by differentiating those two, you suddenly are able as a person to shoot for the stars, okay? But to, only, but, but to know that achieving, you know, just the stratosphere is actually a major achievement. And, and think about it in my own personal story. When, when I wrote Soul for Happy, yeah. uh, I wrote it because, because I sort of felt that my son wanted me to share what he taught me about happiness. And at the time, I gave myself what I thought was an ambitious target. I, it was called hashtag 10 million happy at the time. I wanted his message to reach 10 million people. And I thought in my mind, that you know, through six degrees of separation, a hundred years later, he part of his essence will be everywhere and part of everyone as as he dreamed to be. Now, ten million happy happened within six weeks. Like mm -hmm. literally within six weeks, we had 120 million views on our content, uh, m more than 10 million actions for sure. Okay, and so suddenly the team came together and said, maybe we should increase the target. Hmm? And, 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 and so, you know, sandbagging as salespeople always do, I'm, I apologize, right? <laughs> but, 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 you know, but, but I didn't expect that. And, and so we increased the target, we made it 1 billion happy. So the mission yeah. now is 1 yes. billion happy. Now, you and I know, John Philippe, I'm never going to reach a billion people. I mean, you uh, will, it, it, you will eventually. Uh, it, 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 took, it, took, it took Jesus 2000 years to, to reach a billion yeah. people, right? But, 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 but it, but it, but it, but he, you know, it happens through people. It happened through, yes. you know, yeah. others. So, so, so a, 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 a mission, an ideology, a, a concept takes others, takes champions to build yeah. it. Okay. So, so what would happen if I, you know, on, I'm on, on my deathbed and we've reached 300 million, would I kill myself and call <laughs> myself a failure? No, the ambition is wonderful. The ambition is a billion happy, right? But the expectation is I'm going to do the absolute best I can for our listeners today to be happy. And that's as far as I can, as my, my reach can, you know, my, my impact can reach. And, and if I meet that expectation, I'm very, very happy, but I continue to shoot for the ambition so that I can make a difference. No, I, I love it. Uh, I love the fact you talk about kind of our, our own North Star. Each one of us should have a North Star, that big, bold ambition. But yet, Mo, I, I need to pursue the dialogue with you and, and get from you some, uh, some uh, wisdom or some tips as well. I want, I, want, I want our listeners to have some practical ways <laughs> mm. to think about the way they should daily manage that equation you talked about, right? Which is the way you are yeah. basically uh, planning or unplanning your days with plan events and unplanned events with moments of joy and, and, and very tough moments as well coming your ways. How do you deal with that on a day-to-day yeah. -day basis? 
I, I have to say, when you said pursue the data, I remembered mid-year reviews, and I was like, oh, no, 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 hold on, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> for, for listeners, this is a Microsoft uh, legend, right, about the yeah. business review we used to do. <laughs> exactly, where, where John Philippe would ask about every single number, uh, you know, that ever happened in your market since the last 200 years, and uh, and remember all of them, surprisingly. Anyway, uh, no, so, so, so happiness is... Um, let, let's agree to start with the, the definition. So as we said, it's events meet expectations, which we agreed can be put in a simple equation. Your happiness is equal to or greater than the difference between the events of your life and your expectations of how life should be. Yeah. So, so with a mathematical equation, it's events minus expectations, right? The truth is you can become happier if you set the expectations to be realistic and see the events for what they are. Okay, it's as simple as that. Many, many times in life, we uh, we think that the event is coming short, hmm? but the truth is the event is amazing. And many, many times in life, we think that the event, which e which is still amazing, is missing expectations. But that's only because the expectation yeah. is inflated. Yeah. So it's only a matter of tuning those two, and and all of that happens inside your head. Okay, hmm. it doesn't happen outside in the world. Huh? All yeah. of that calculation is inside your head, which basically means the number one target to happiness uh, or, or path to happiness is to actually regulate your thoughts, is to mm -hmm. be able to take control of that wild whirlpool happening inside your head and really, really get it down to reality. And because we're, you know, we're, we're, we come from a technology background, mm -hmm. I don't share that often, but I actually will say I follow what I call a happiness flow chart, hmm. okay? And, yep. and the happiness flow, flow chart is very straightforward for me. Hmm? You, you feel an emotion, you feel a negative emotion, okay? Uh, number one task you have to do is to acknowledge the emotion. As a matter of fact, you need to embrace the emotion. You need to say, oh my God, I'm angry. Oh, that, where did that come from, right? Yep. Most of us have been trained in the modern world to hide those emotions, to suppress them to even tell ourselves that they don't exist because we don't want to show them to the rest of the world. What is the best way, by the way, to acknowledge? Uh, to, to realize the truth, Jean-Philippe, we, every human being, including yeah. you, who, who sometimes was a tough leader for us, of course. okay? We, we, we all, you know, anyone knows that you're human, you love your children, you want to do the right thing by the company, you, everyone has those emotions. It's, it's, just, it's just that the modern world told us, no, they're not supposed to show, and so we thought that mm. they don't exist. But they're the only moments in life we feel alive, by the way. Imagine waking up one morning and all you have is thoughts. No, no feelings, no sensations, no emotions, you'll, you'll not feel alive, you'll not feel human. No. Now, the beauty of it is every emotion is true. By the way, people forget that. Huh? If you feel angry, hmm, yes, you may not have a reason to be angry. Maybe you're exaggerating. Maybe you didn't see the event correctly. But if you feel angry, it's true. You feel angry. It's the truth. Okay? You, you shouldn't hide that. And, and what I do is I say by embracing the emotion, yeah. okay, that's the first moment I can actually do something about it. Hmm? Uh, you know, un unless I embrace it, it will linger and eat me up from inside. Hmm? And, and, and it's not a wise thing to do. Like business leaders, hmm? yep. what, what did we do when the market changed? Hmm? We looked at it and said, man, that's going to be tough. You know, it's annoying after all of the work we've done with that CEO that the CEO changed or whatever. Hmm? But, but all business, all successful business leaders said two minutes later, okay, so what are we going to do now? Right? Which truly is the rest of the flow chart. Acknowledge your emotion and, you and then and then and then there are three questions that will always get you back to happiness. Question number one is is it true? Mm -hmm. It's not the it, it's not if the emotion is true, but is the trigger of that emotion true? Is the is the thought that's making me feel angry, is it true? Okay, the example I always give is Aya and I, Aya, my daughter and I, we yeah. love each other so deeply. We're best friends. Okay, and, and Aya, uh, you know, sometimes has an argument with me. We're two different generations. We see the world slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when she has an argument with me, I remember vividly one day I was visiting her in Montreal. She had an argument with me and I, I said, okay, baby, I'm going to go out, have a coffee, cool down, and then we can discuss this. Right. 
as the minute I walk out of the door, my brain says, Aya doesn't love you anymore. Hmm. Where the where did you get that from? Like what 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 evidence do you have of this? She she just texted me yesterday to say, Come in the morning, I miss you, we'll have breakfast together. That hmm. shows that she loves me. Now, if I go up my WhatsApp chat, there are hugs and kisses and we Many always have a wonderful time. Yeah. Where did you come up with that brain? And so often what's making us unhappy is actually not even real. Hmm? And so if it's not true, if the answer to the question is no, drop it. Don't be unhappy about Stop it. Stop it. If, yeah. yeah. If, if the answer to the question is yes, go further in the flow chart. Hmm. Okay. And, and do what every business leader, every entrepreneur has ever done. Ask the question, what can I do about it? What can I do yes. about it? If, 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 you know, if your partner said something hurtful on Friday, okay, and it mm-hmm. actually is very hurtful and it is true, what can you do about it? Text them, say, hey baby, what you said on Friday hurt me. Can, I, can we talk about this over dinner? Okay, or ask yourself if this is the right partner or you know, maybe you need to, to set some rules or whatever. Okay, but do something about it. If do you something do something, about about, yeah. yeah, if you do something about it, second step of, this, of the flow chart, you're, you're first gonna make the world better and second, by engaging in action, the unhappiness goes away. What, however, if there is nothing you can do about it? You and I mm. know bo- both know this, right? I lost yes. my son, you lost yeah. your son, and there is no way you can bring them back. I could hit my head against the wall for 27 mm. years. He's not coming back. On, on my deathbed, Ali will still not be here, right? So what if you cannot do anything about it? That's the last step of the, of the flow chart. And the last step is very straightforward. I call it committed acceptance, okay? It's acceptance that the baseline of your life has changed, not out of weakness, but out of strength. Again, like you and I as business people, in a, in a, in a market downtime, in downturn, we don't complain about the world. We simply say it is the reality. We accept it, okay? But the commitment bit is what's unique. The commitment is, and while we accept it, we're not gonna sit down and die. We're, we're gonna actually take action to make life better despite that new baseline. As a matter of fact, sometimes because of that new baseline, yeah. okay? Yeah. And and so and so I went out and I wrote Soul for Happy and I spread the message to the world. Yes, yeah. it doesn't bring Ali back, but at least it makes the world better after he left. No, thanks for uh, alighting that uh, experience you had uh, first, Mo, in the first place and the way you try to experience it every day, I guess, to go through the, this flow yeah, and, and make it real because all of us, uh, have to experience that uh, differently. As we think about the business world, I mean, you are obviously uh, someone who's been leading teams at Google X, Microsoft, and you're an entrepreneur as well. You've got teams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How should we think as leaders about managing or shaping happiness for our teams and members? Does it yeah. make any sense in the first place? I'm not talking about buying them sushis and and give them massage, right? I'm talking about truly yeah. creating some moments of uh, repeated moments of uh, positive energy, of joy, yeah. of yeah. fulfillment, where people love to get together to go and solve our problems and yeah. have tough discussion as well. Because yeah, business life also sometimes is not easy, and be mm-hmm. able to to bounce back and do great things together. So, how do you apply that m- philosophy? I would say to the business world, if that applies? It applies firmly. It's actually the wisest thing you can do. I mean, in a, in a very interesting way, uh, I think uh, everything starts with intention. And, and as a leader, unless you see the value of happiness for your team, not, not employee satisfaction, these are two very different things. Huh? Happiness is that, as we defined it, is that the team is okay with life as it is, that the team could be working nine hours a day, yeah. but they're, you know, or, or 12 hour days, and, uh, you know, sometimes during the, uh, the yeah. high season or, you know, a customer deal or whatever, but they're happy about it. They're content that this is the right thing to do. They feel positive. They feel motivated to do it. And when you really think about it, John philippe it's yeah. not because the leader is a nice person. It's the wisest business decision ever. Why? Because happy people are more engaged. 
they're nicer to their clients, so their clients love them, they share more with them, they meet them more often, they allow yeah. them to come yeah. for meetings. They're nicer with their colleagues, so their colleagues help them out and there is no friction in the office. There is no wasted time on uh, on conflict. You know, they're, they're, they're just, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, they, they have less absent, uh, you know, they're less absent on, on sick leave. They don't yeah. cost the company in terms of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, mental health costs and so on. They're, they're all around and they much stick more, around by the way. Well engaged, yeah, much more yeah, engaged every yeah. day. Yes, and, and they yeah. stick around so you yeah. don't have to hire a new person every year and a half because they're unhappy. Now, that's a very wise thing to do if you do the math of it. It's the wisest thing you can do. Now, when you get that clear, I always say to leaders there are two pieces of advice, okay? Mm -hmm. The first one is attend to yourself first before you help others. Right. Remember when we used to fly around the world and they tell you that when you get on an airplane, yeah. right? you can you can never help anyone become happy if you're grumpy yourself. It, yeah. it just doesn't work. OK. And so there is a need for an acknowledgement to say to yourself, look, I am very stressed by my work. I carry so many targets. I need to work on me. OK. And I need to find ways to be able to be vulnerable sometimes, to be open with my team sometimes, to share openly sometimes. I need to find my own happiness. Okay, and when when the leader, you know, is on a path to find happiness, the whole team follows. Huh? Just like when the leader is on a path to make to create a, a billion dollars company, the whole company follows. Okay, if the leader is on on a path to create a billion dollars happy company, right, the the, the team will follow. And, and I, that, can, that's very I, clear. I can feel that uh, clearly that uh, propagation, I would say, of that happiness from the leader to the team uh, more. But sometimes, you know, well. Hey, people have hard moments in their lives, your employees, yeah. your team members. And yeah. so how far do you go? Where do you draw the line, right? In terms of opening the personal life, the professional lives. I know myself, you know, for years, I was a very traditional manager leader. I'll say, hey, mm -hmm. those are two separate worlds, the private life <laughs> and the professional life. And, and, I, and I got to realize year after year that, hey, we are all humans. We all have emotions, <laughs> we have, uh, and, we, and we reconcile those dimensions every day in everything we do. So how do you deal yeah. with that uh, when people have to struggle personally? Yeah, I, I, I actually have been put into that firmly because, you know, I have two lives, really. So I'm the CEO of my startup, which is yep. very, very intensely technological, very, very, uh, you know, demanding of my time. But at the same time, I have my life as a, hot, a podcast host, as a, you know, an author, as a speaker and so on, on the topics of happiness. So so to me, I have those two lives and they're, they live in the same calendar. OK, so our conversation right now my entire team at the uh, you know in in my companies can see in my calendar that i am going to be on the positive leadership podcast now the 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 the, the point here is to, is to is to change a few terminologies hmm, uh, that that business told us wrong by the way it's the industrial revolution that told us hmm, uh, separate life from work hmm, while reality is wise business people realize that it's one person OK, exactly. it's just one one human. And yeah. and it's so interesting because, you know, words like vulnerability are not welcome at work. Hmm? But that's actually not true. The word that is not welcome is weakness to the point that will this th th that will, you know, jeopardize success. But vulnerability is actually preventing that weakness from getting there. If you go out there and say, hey, by the way, I'm not feeling great today. Uh, you know, it's better maybe if I take a few hours off. Hmm? That's better than coming to work and destroying everything. Right. Uh, you know, th there are there are words like, and I I say that uh, honestly, huh? there are words like love, which yeah. we, we, we which we prevent from work. I absolutely love dearly everyone I've worked with, including you, right? You you were you you were always a tough leader, but I could also always see hmm, through your you know your your pushing us to get to, to do better, I could always see the human that came to me when I was in the Paris office and said, hey, by the way, I really think you're doing well. OK. And, and that balance between those two hmm, creates those emotions in us, whether you're angry with one of your colleague, whether you're, you're you know, you really like them, whether you think they're funny. Hmm? And what's the point in hiding all of that? If it's not hurting anyone, by the way, when we spoke about emotions, huh? yeah. emotions in themselves don't hurt anyone. I interviewed on Slow Mo on my podcast, I interviewed mm -hmm. Arun Gandhi, the grandson mm -hmm. of Gandhi. And mm -hmm. he wrote a book that's called The, um, the uh, Gift mm -hmm. of Anger. 
And I said, mm-hmm. what are you talking about, Aaron? And he said, anger is an energy. Okay, you can use it to punch someone in the face, or you can use it to 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 you know to 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 sound an alarm and say something needs to change. Okay, and it's it's wonderful to use it. So so can we bring those things to work? Can we tell people it's okay to be human? But the deal between us, okay, is that we're going to always work to make it better for our success as a business. Okay, it's okay to feel to feel worried, but don't feel worried and hide it and talk about it in the corridors. Feel worried and come and talk to me. Okay, so I am aware that you're worried, so I can try to do something about it. And when you talk to me, it's okay to sometimes hide some some confidential information from you. But can you please not mask it up and sugarcoat it? Tell me openly as a manager or a leader. Tell me openly. I can't tell you this bit yet. Okay, and if imagine if our work is like that. Most people who don't like their jobs, it's not because the job is hard. It's because they're unhappy. Yes. And, and uh, uh, you know, I, I certainly uh, follow your, your guidance, uh, Mo. And, and, you know, my, my own conviction is that we all can generate, in a way, our own positive energy. Uh, oh, yeah. If we get on top again or, of our mind, of our little voice, as you call it, <laughs> right? everyone yeah. calls it, right? Yeah. And I and I f- and I feeling that myself, you know, when I when I'm really getting a lot more in control and managing in a positive way my emotion, my physical wellness, my mental wellness, and be in a position to propagate that to people I'm working with every day. So opening yeah. a conversation with a, a smile, but not just a smile for the sake of a smile, but really with the intention of listening deeply. Yes. By getting some positive vibes and trying to establish a climate of trust and confidence, but also of positivity. So what do you think about that flow of energy, of positive energy versus negative energy? You know, coming back to, the, to this book from uh, Fred Erickson, she had another equation herself. She said, you know what, you need actually three times more positive energy moments, moments of positivity versus mm. moments of negativity. In other words, negativity really hurts really bad. Very <laughs> and bad. You need yeah. to, to manage three times more those moments with your people, family, or professionals. So what do you think about that positive this energy is, and the way you yeah. manage it yourself? This is absolute science. Huh? So, so we are wired as humans for survival. Hmm? When your amygdala gets triggered because there is something negative around you, that entire cycle uh, from from the amygdala to the, down the you know the, the the all the way to your adrenal glands yeah. where you g- get cortisol and adrenaline and you're in a fight or flight mode and then you have to do the f- negative feedback loop. This is a very complex and very lengthy, uh, even though it does take only nine seconds per 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 cycle, cycle but we're yeah. able to regenerate it over and over and over and 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 obsess about one topic hmm, that that we can go about you know and feel threatened about for years hmm? so 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 one neg- one bit of negativity really lasts okay but i also think that there are certain positive emotions hmm, that are much more uh, wholesome let's say hmm. than others Right. So so laughter, love, trust, hmm? those moments where you connect deeply to a human, I, I, you know, and, and believe it or not, believe it or not. It's you know, there are different types of leaders out there. But I spent most of my senior years as a leader in Google X hmm? with hmm. no job, no job other than connecting deeply to my team. That's all I did. Okay, Mm. because in my mind, I was no longer the individual contributor. I was no longer even the the, the manager. Okay, I was finally the leader as as the leader. You don't even have to manage the spreadsheet yourself or manage the forecast yourself. All you need to do is to make sure that this person responsible for whatever task, writing a line of code or delivering the billion dollars, hmm, that they are empowered and enabled and trusting and so on. And in all honesty, how do you do that? How do you do that other than actually finding the positive emotions? Okay. And I will tell you a story and, and I will omit the, you know, omit the name because hmm. it's, it, it's it, you know, it's not right to say the name. But I had a country manager in my early years at Google. In my first seven years, hmm. I opened half of Google's offices worldwide. So I was expanding across emerging markets. 
And um, and I had a country manager that came to me the first time we met with a horrible business plan. Like it was a disgrace. It was yeah. really, really bad. OK. <laughs> and, 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 and I love people, but it was so bad that around 20 minutes into the conversation, I said, would you please go back and rework on this? Because it's really, really off target. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not in a not not in a horrible way, but sure. you know, in a kind way. Hmm? Uh, and then he came back around uh, six weeks later, and in my mind, I was like, "This is going to be horrible. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be a waste of one hour of my time." And eventually, I think I'm just going to be upset again. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and so I walked in with the with the exact wrong emotion and hmm. exact wrong energy, if you want. Hmm? Five minutes into the meeting, and you know, if anyone ever speaks to him, you they will he will remember that. <laughs> five minutes into the meeting, I said, "Can I please excuse be excused for five minutes? I need to do something, hmm. okay?" Because I actually recognized that he was talking a lot of sense, and I was very negative, okay. And I walked outside, and I told myself, "Look, he's a wonderful human being. He's trying to do the absolute best that he can," and. Unless you'd stop judging before you see the data, okay, you're doing him and yourself a disfavor, okay? And I just calmed down, thought positively about wonderful things yeah. and walked back into the meeting. Best business plan I have ever been presented. Ever done. <laughs> right? Ever, okay? Oh, and I will tell you, yeah. and, and he, he, he became massively successful in the company, by the way. And it, it's amazing when you really, as a leader, tell yourself, hold on, he's a wonderful person trying the absolute best that he can. Hmm? And by the way, if what if, if the best that he can is not good enough, that's because of a match to the job. Find him another job, and Absolutely. anyone that's trying to do the best that he can will do amazing. No, that's, that's, a, that's a great example. Uh, more, uh, and I would say uh, myself, a number of such experiences and and working really on my, not just on my mind, on my world, right? Your thoughts to your world, yeah. to yeah. make sure I was picking the right world to give yeah. the right nudge motivation excitement to the person in front of me in some case when you know discussion was not that easy actually yeah (laughs) and find ways to bounce back and get the energy back to the person so that the person could be confident and product proud actually of coming back to me absolutely with some wonderful work a few weeks months or even year after and i've seen a few of those amazing i would say turnaround situation where people because of the deep confidence you've been in, you know, projecting to themselves made a huge yeah. difference. They, they, they need to feel that you're not against them, that you're for them and for the company at the same time. OK, and, and it's, it's a simple ending equation. You're, you're simply telling them, look, we all both agree the company needs to succeed and I want you to succeed. So how can we make that happen? How can we make both happen? And once that trust is established, we're in a very good place. It's not a tough conversation. No, it's not. So, so Mo, no, I, li- I like to uh, to kind of connect the dots because I'm I'm a, I'm a strong believer, and I think you are as well, of uh, having and trying to have a positive impact uh, on the world. I mean, yeah. whether it is a billion people for you, which is mind blowing, or <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean. Or for me, just a few hundreds of thousands of, uh, of social entrepreneurs with the Live for Good Foundation. You've got your own uh, one billion happy movement. I do believe that actually being able uh, to uh, project that North Star with others and really uh, have this uh, purpose mindset where yeah. you basically, you know, uh, basically really um, define some of those bold ambition, as you said, and yeah. find every day the opportunities to get there step by step even if you never get to the billion as you said mm. is so critical so how do you think about and where and how would you advise our listeners to shape their own kind of uh you know when billions whatever it means for yeah. everyone yeah. everyone yeah. of you listening to us what is your what is your one billion mm. missions I, I, I in fi- life yeah yeah i, f- I find it i find it I find it interesting because without a purpose, life becomes very stale, right? It's just, it just doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything. Huh? Man search for meaning. If, if anyone hasn't read that, you have to read this. But, 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 but also the definition of purpose in our Western world is a little bit blurred, right? Because in, in the Western world, we tend to productize pers- everything. We, de- we, de- we tend to ev- turn everything into something that you go and attain. 
right? And so I, I remember vividly, there was a moment in my life where I told myself, my purpose is to help startups build technologies that are equivalent to Google out of emerging markets. Mm. And I was like, where did that come from? You know, in, in reality, it ended up that my purpose was one billion happy. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is this. Uh, so I, I used to play a lot of games with Ali. I'm, I'm a very mm. serious video gamer. Uh, yeah. Thanks to the Xbox, I'm, I'm in the top. I'm like in the, in the very, very top of, uh, of, the, of, of the players in the world at Halo. Right. Uh, I'm daring everyone listening here, by the way. But uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway, so 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 because I played a lot of video games with Ali, uh, when I was when I used to play with Ali, Ali was legendary. OK, hmm. I, I was, you know, I played difficult or heroic at best. And Ali taught me so much about life through video games. And so and, and, and I remember vividly when we would start a game, John Philippe, I would yeah. turn to the right and rush to the end of the level. OK, <laughs> and Ali would literally put his controller down and say, what are you doing, Papa? And I'm like, the end of the level is here. We have to finish the level. And he goes like, who wants to finish the level? We're playing. We're playing. Hmm? Hmm. We're, we're here in this incredible experience together yeah. to actually enjoy it and live it. Hmm? And, and, I, and I said, but isn't our target to finish the level? And he said, no, no. your target yeah. is to become the best gamer you can become. And that's such a profound statement. Hmm? Your purpose in life is very straightforward. It's to become the best gamer you can become. Okay, that doesn't mean you finish the level. That doesn't mean you increase the score. It basically means you engage in life positively and learn. Okay, and when Ali when when, when Ali would play, he would go to the most difficult parts of the game, the parts where there are explosions and smoke. Hmm? Yeah, and yeah. and I would go like, why are you there, Ali? Why why are you going to the most difficult part? And he says, this is where all the fun is, and this <laughs> is where you become a better gamer. This is where you develop and grow. Huh? Now, when you really think about this, think about my story, your story. Hmm? Yeah. We, we go through life engaging positively every day. Sometimes you get you know, knocked out and you get up again, and other times you're making progress, but you're positively engaging, becoming the best player you can become every single day, every shot. Hmm? And eventually your purpose finds you. Yeah. It's not the other way around. OK, yeah. if yeah. you're not qualified, if you're not qualified, you'd be doing your purpose a disfavor by setting it as a target. OK, so so many people out there who want to be coaches. OK, and they have coaching practices and they have clients, but they haven't achieved their own state of happiness yet. OK, yes, you're helping, but you're also unhelping. Hmm? And maybe you should spend more time developing your own self, developing, as I said, attend to yourself first before you help others. So when it comes to purpose, my only advice to people is don't judge it. Don't hmm. pre-pick it. Hmm? It's not a consumable product. OK, don't no. define it as a target, because when you define it as a target, I, I'm going to put a, uh, you know, um, uh, um, um, a give a give a, a, a computer to every uh, <laughs> human on Earth. OK. Uh, which you know, lap, uh, remember laptop for every child. You know that initiative. Oh yes, right? I do. Yeah. I so do. so yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. what happens? What happens is when you when you have when you have that objective, you spend your entire life waiting for it to happen, dissatisfied, and then when it happens, you're so empty. It's like okay, that's it. What do I do now? Okay, middle age crisis at its best. Yeah, huh? yeah. And 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 I think the answer is very straightforward. The answer is engage every day, do the best that you can every day, and you will get many many purposes. OK, and major purposes showing up when they show up, attend to them fully and be flexible, continue to engage and the purpose will change. Right. Uh, and that's the way to live a fulfilled life. I love it, uh, Mo. It's so uh, it's so true. And uh, and so much a uh, day to day, I would say, uh, again, uh, growth of yourself. I mean, I see I, yeah. uh, I see us growing through those. Uh, those uh, steps. Uh, let me finish a couple of last questions, Mo. Uh, I'd like you to share, if you can, some of the best, uh, basically, your happiest moments uh, <laughs> that you had in your life or your careers. As you said, we have one life. And uh, what was that? Or <laughs> and when you oh step God. back and realize <laughs> what it was, what, 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 were, what was the reason for that moment of happiness? 
I, I'm, I'm I'm constantly happy. I think it's a brain defect. But <laughs> but if you if you if you want, I, I, actually no, it's not a brain defect. It's bra- it's brain training over many 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 years. I should be very clear about that. But I, I you know, and there are many moments that stand out. But I remember vividly. I think it was November 2018. I was on stage. Uh, speaking in a in a in a conference called Wisdom in Business here in the Netherlands, mm. and um, and uh, I cried so hard, like I wept on the stage, okay, mm. because uh, it hit me so hard that, of course, you know, Aya and Ali were the love of my life, and Aya, of course, still is the love of my life, uh, but when Ali left, he left a very big gap in my heart. Okay, it's not he wasn't just my son. He was my son. He was my best friend. As you can see, he was my coach on many topics. And 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 there was that, uh, you know, longing for that hug, if you want. Okay, Uh, And then on that stage, because I spent the the hour before my talk uh, on, uh, you know, mingling with people and and I've my book has been very successful here in the Netherlands. um, I felt an overwhelming amount of love. Okay, mm-hmm. I felt that everyone in those in that two thousand people in the audience, every one of them was pouring love on me. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and it just hit me on stage when I was asked this question uh, by, by the by the moderator, what what mm-hmm. makes you very happy? It hit me so hard that if God of or or life, if you want, uh, uh, took away the love of Ali and replaced it with so much love. Okay, and so much love was not the result of me being a pop star or, you know, singing a, yes. an amazing number one hit. It was simply because I could manage to make a few more people happy in the world. You you, you can't understand how, how many people are just longing for that feeling and it's so elusive for them. And when they get some clarity, it just makes a difference, right? And, and so if you ask me, what is the thing that makes you happiest? I would say it's to make others happy, okay? And I know it sounds cliche, but it's, it is so true. Okay, it's just you you meet one person. I mean, honestly, Jean-Philippe, with all the blessings that you gave me when I worked for you, all of the teachings, all of the learnings to know that my book made a difference for you. Okay, Mm -hmm. that's an incredible joy. It's an incredible feeling of like, oh, my God, my life was worth it. Okay, and so I ask people to think about that, to think about the idea of maybe life is not just about me. Maybe life is about making others experience life in a positive way and me being part of that pack if you want part of that gang if you want and i think that truly brings the the most positive moments in life no i mean you you, you know your story really uh, cannot resonate more with me uh, more uh, at the same mm-hmm. feeling myself you know as i created uh, live for good uh, five years ago uh, uh, the the name by the way, it came from my son, Gabriel. And yeah. he, he wrote me a note a few years back when he was 18 years old saying, Dad, I have this vital desire to uh, change others' lives positively. Mm. And, and that, that, that <laughs> those few words, that voice uh, yeah. is, is in my heart, in my mind all the time. And so when I'm in a situation like I did a few weeks back, right, to uh, award some young social entrepreneurs coming from all walks of life to to enable them to make a positive impact by creating a social enterprise that can really change the world step by step, you know, one street at a time, one person yeah. at a time, one problem at a time. It, it gives me that moment of joy and fulfillment uh, yeah. in, a, in a huge way. So what you what you just share with me is like uh, is yeah. something uh, fair. It's the deeply. truth. It's the truth. And, and and I will say and I will say people shouldn't think of this as oh, but this is Jean Philippe and this is Mo and they've had their career and their no. You can you can change the life of the barista when you order a coffee. You can you can change the life of your sister by just sending her a kind message. Okay. And 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 as again as Ali taught me about purpose. Huh? All you need to do is to engage. If you if you positively tell yourself, I'll just change the life of one person today, life will send you two tomorrow and four the next day, right? All you really need to do is to engage and, and to continue to make a difference. I think we're gonna we're gonna end with those uh, wonderful words of uh, encouragement to all of our listeners, more and all of us, honestly, day after day, 
to go after this, uh, this equation of uh, happiness in our lives. Uh, let me share with you maybe my three takeaways listening to you again uh, another time today. First is about attending to yourself. I mm. think that starts with that. Second is really about the way you define your bold ambition while managing your own expectations in life. And the third one, which I love, is your purpose is to become the best gamer. Whatever <laughs> game you want to play, <laughs> you, you have chosen your own games more, obviously. I've chosen mine as well. Each one of us need to become the best gamer that we've picked in our lives. And with that, uh, I want to, uh, to thank you from the bottom of my heart for <laughs> giving me again a great uh, moment of happiness <laughs> spent thank you. together. And, and I'm sure that many, many of the listeners will follow up reading your books, uh, checking on your many, many, many YouTube videos and, and many other moments uh, that uh, you had the pleasure to build that billion <laughs> of people uh, happy in the future in the world. So thank you so much, uh, Mo, and, uh, and looking forward to see you in person soon enough. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jean-Philippe. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for what you're doing. And thanks, everyone, for listening.